Shirt Show. All right, let's go. Shirt Show! Talking Shirt! Shirt Show! Talking Shirt! Shirt Show! Talking Shirt! Shirt Show! Talking Shirt! Shirt Show! Shirt Show! All right! Episode 197 of Shirt Show! We're talking with Matt from Strength Screen Printing in Canada. Let's go! Yo. Yo. Um, it doesn't look like you have a sunburn. It just looks like you're, you know, maybe a little like you're blushing. I think you see the back of my you see the back of my hand, it's like splotchy and red. And then my just, whole arm is you see you don't see the difference in color. Oh, I do there, yeah. And you got the farmer's tan. Yeah. You also fucking are buff. Top, top of my ears are fucking like peeling. That's the worst. If you ha- have you ever had it okay, where you get here you go. I just peel a chunk of skin off for you if you want it. Well, that's gross. Have you ever had it where your scalp gets burned? Like you're you're no. so burned. Oh yeah, you wear a hat. But if you don't wear a hat, you can get sunburn on your head. <laughs> no, thank you. That doesn't feel good. Oh, what about the tops yeah. of your feet? That's the worst. I've had that. That's fucking terrible. Yeah, Florida is. If you don't know, Florida is near the equator, and right. so what that means is that the sun is stronger because you're closer. Ooh, you're yeah. actually closer to the sun. And one year, I don't know, maybe it was five years ago or something, we were in Florida and we were on the beach and it, I don't know what it got to be like we were in the sun for a couple hours. So I'm like, oh, you know, we just, I'm going to stay under the umbrella. Like for the rest of the day, I'm under the umbrella. And apparently it's so strong, the sun down there, that it goes through, it penetrates the umbrella. Like it goes through the umbrella and burns both of us, you know, like not severe. I believe it. I believe bad. it. Yeah. So, I went yeah. down and uh, visited her and uh, like did a bunch of yard work. Super fun. Super like, uh, mm-hmm. well, let me back up. I, I left New York Sunday night and I had or like a runny nose and I was like, oh God, I'm fucking getting the head cold again or whatever. Get there next day. Like she's got to work and I'm like, all right, I'm just going to do like yard work stuff because this is stuff that I like to do. Like I'm looking Mm -hmm. forward to it. So I'm out in the yard doing this stuff. And again, no sunscreen because I'm a moron. And I'm out there like all day doing stuff. And I'm like, fucking like my nose is running like crazy. And when I blow my nose hard, I get bloody noses really easy. So I have like rags in my nose half the day because like blood's coming out. What a mess. And then and then, yeah. And so then I come in the house and like my eyes are like swollen and like I have sunburn and like they're on my eyes are on fire and watery. And like, it was just, it was just a fucking mess. Sounds cute. So then this morning I woke up home and uh, I went to the doctor and they were like, yeah, pretty sure you have a sinus infection. So gave me some meds and uh, I took one pill so far. So I'm basically cured. <laughs> Well, I hope you feel better, man. So you went from Florida to New York and it's very yeah. nice. You got 80 degrees up there in New York too? It was 70 here yesterday and I missed it. And then it's about 60 here today and it's beautiful and sunshine. It's nice. Well, that's not bad. No, it's good. I'd take 60 any day. Mm-hmm. Yeah, me too. But other than that, just the normal stuff, normal work, um, getting back into the swing of things. Things are picking up. I got a bunch of paid invoices the last couple of days. So it's just nice. So I'm hoping it's uh, smooth, smooth sailing. Yeah. So paid invoices for you mean orders to come. They pay first, right? So they're, yes. they're, pre, they're prepay. So which means, yeah, as so you look at your invoices for the day, and you're like, oh, we got this much work today and it's coming. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's cool. Money yeah, in the I bank. Money in the bank and orders in the shop. Yes. That feels good, man. Yeah. Mm-hmm. For sure. Um, before I forget, if you're going to ISSAC, Atlantic City, we have a seminar on shop culture on Friday, March 22nd, 9 a.m. to 1015. Um, if you use code IMSK shirt show 25 uh, at the checkout. Longest code ever. Yeah, you get 25% off. So come hang out with us. Yeah. Come say hey. Come say hey. You know, do weird stuff in the crowd. So, you know, flusters us and we lose mm-hmm. track of what we're actually talking about. I'm hoping cool. for like a smaller group than Long Beach. Like I would, it would be cool. You know how, how, how Atlantic City is normally smaller. I'm hoping for just a smaller 
group, if I guess that's a seminar, so that we can just all kind of be intimate. You want you it know? to be like a, like an AA meeting? We'll sit in a circle. Yeah, yeah. Share stories, share our wins, share our losses. I would actually love that, honestly. Why can't we just have meetings that aren't about alcohol like that? Just sit around in a circle and talk feelings with people? We can. We can just, we can start it. Do they have that? Is that, is that a real thing? Just a feelings well, talk circle? You remember Fight Club, like the movie, there were the support groups that they, he, they would go to? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so we could just have a, we can make up any support group we want. Can we beat the fuck out of each other too? <laughs> well, I, I, I would, I, in all honesty, I'm at a point in my life right now where I would, I think I probably would join a fight club. <laughs> like once a week, just beat the fuck out of somebody you're friends with. And at the end, you're cool with it. I, I, I want to be, that, I want to be meatloaf though. I want to be bitch tits. I can't like, I just can't be in the group because my back and everything else, I'm finally feeling good. Like my, I just couldn't recover from an ass beaten, you know, it would take a while. <laughs> yeah, you like, don't do it every week. You just go in when you want to go in. You're scrappy though. You probably like run around people and like fucking pull their legs out and shit. Like you're probably so fast mm -hmm. that you wouldn't even get hit. Like I, I feel like if we fought, like I would go to take a swing and you would already be like through my legs and on my back, scratching my eyes out. You know, I wrestled. And so I would just take you down. That makes sense. Like bigger they are, the harder they fall. So I would just take your ass down. You know, it's funny. Me and Chris mm -hmm. used to like fake wrestle in the shop mm -hmm. and I would come up to like behind him and grab him. Like I was going to pick him up and do something mm -hmm. to him. His go-to move is stiff as a board. Like he just straightens mm -hmm. his whole body out. And it's like, <laughs> you can't do anything with that. Like mm -hmm. you can't, it's so hard to pick a human up. That's like instantly just turns into dead weight. I, uh, you know, talk about fake wrestling. It was something like we did as kids is fake fighting. Sometimes it was just fun. So we've, uh, I remember in the halls one day, it was like in sixth grade or something. And I, we fake fought me and one of my friends, we fake fought. And a teacher came by and thought we were really fighting. And we got, we went to the principal's office and it was mandatory 10 SWATs. Like I got 10 fucking SWATs, hard SWATs. <laughs> I thought you said squats. I was like, no, no, no. What fucking school are you at where you go in the principal's office and he makes you do 10 squats? <laughs> Andy. Yeah, that would be a you, little. <laughs> you got. You need to talk to somebody about it's that. like, hey, um, we're going to close the door here for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Take your pants off and do 10 squats for me and I'll let you go. <laughs> no, but yeah, we got swatted for fake fighting. I was like, no, no, we, we were it, we were like messing around. We weren't it wasn't real and they, they didn't believe us. Mm -hmm. So anyway, yeah. Good times. Um, talked to Frank yesterday. Frank is doing good. Rehab is coming along. He's he has a goal of playing golf. By, what did he tell me? I want to say he said May 1st. And I'm like, bro, no, don't do it. Don't do it. And of all uh, things, golf, the thing where you have to like twist your body. And, I know. Like, I know. Shoulders. I'm just like, wait a little longer. Just wait a little longer. Just do it. Like, get in a couple bar fights like we talked about, but don't play golf. That's just too much. Yeah. You know, it's too much. I just want to so, see him Dalton fucking rip a throat out. We'll see. I don't know. But, I could probably get this? him to rip a throat out in AC. Bring it on home, boy. That's right. It all starts with the screen. And whether it's new stretches or restretches, Frank and his team do it the best. To find out more, go to graphicscreenfashion.com. F F F F F. Rank.com. Or great fucking screens.com. You thought I was gonna mess up, didn't you? I, I faked I did, you out. like counting on my hands. It was like fake fighting. Now I now I have to squat. Hold on. Can make me squat i fucking hope this is how you really deal with things you're like oh i'm in trouble <laughs> gotta do some squats <laughs> that's how i work the legs it's leg day every day all right mm -hmm. cleaning screens is no fun but easy way makes it way more fun or their line of eco-friendly chemicals will make reclaiming screens a whole lot easier check them out at easyway.com easy way is the easiest way Choosing the right emulsion for your shop is complicated, and that's why we love Chromaline. Go to Chromaline.com to watch Kev's vids or contact him on Instagram at the Emulsion Guru to get the answers you would love to see. Speaking of love to see, he came out with a nice video of Orion at. So oh, yeah? Handsome. Yeah. Talking I, about I Chromaline. It. Okay. Where do I find that video? Probably Ryan, that's YouTube page. Okay. Well, thanks. I'll, you want to send me the link? I'd, I'd appreciate it. 
Mm -hmm. I'll send you a few links. All right. Thanks, Bud. Kev's highlights. If you are not using DTF or screen print transfers in your shop, you're doing it all wrong. So here's the deal. We have partnered with Howard Custom Transfers to get you the transfers you need fast. Check them out at howardct.com. Com. Com it's is com. the correct answer. It's the right answer. You know what com okay, stands cool. for? Comma. Short, short for comma. <laughs> yeah, I think that's okay. it. Okay. How do you know so much? Like, seriously, how do you know so much? I'm just a smart guy. Look at these glasses. You are. You got a lot. Got a lot up there. Yeah. That head. Mm -hmm. That noggin. Got a lot. Thinking about buzzing my hair again. What mm. do you think? I want your opinion. No. Go, going back to the buzz. Um, right to the scalp. I like something to grab onto. Me too, but, you know, you know, it's also it gets really hot in the summer and I wear a hat and it's just more insulation. I think, I think you leave it. You think so? I think you just let it all grow like, like long. Dude, I will be a fucking Sasquatch for real. Like if I don't mm. shave, hair grows up to my eyeballs. Yeah, don't do that. SNS has been our go-to since day one. Did you know? that they have eight distribution centers, which allows them to ship to 41 states in one day. I you knew know how many? a lot, but I didn't sit there and do the math. Well, that's a lot of states, 41. It's not 50. Step up your game. The fuck's your problem? <laughs> yeah, so put a uh, put a put an SNS in Hawaii and Alaska, yeah, okay? get there. And then invite us out because, I mean, we have to check it out. You wait, you wait. I wouldn't be surprised if they have one in Alaska and Hawaii. I soon. keep trying to get invited. Like, I need someone to invite me from either Hawaii or Alaska and, like, be like, hey, come out. I need I need that trip. Do you know what I was thinking is that a shirt distributor is sort of like an accountant or a banker. You know, like, it's one of the most important things you can have. Is a relationship with your shirt because that's what we do every day is we print t-shirts mm, that's true yeah but yeah check them out at ssactivewear.com who we got on today bud d today we are talking shop with matthew cassidy from strength screen printing located in saskatoon saskatchewan uh -oh. i think i, I said I that can, right i don't know if i can trust him yeah i definitely <laughs> can't trust him he had two fucking first names what the hell at least my last name is like Butch Cassidy. That's pretty intimidating, isn't it? Yeah, that's true, too. He had two first names. <laughs> that's, that's true. You got me there. I get that all the time. Mm -hmm. Is that sunlight coming in there, or you just got floodlights pointing at you? <laughs> those are those are UV rays. I, got, mm. I, got, I better be careful with my gingerness here. We don't want to I was going to say, you're going to burst in the flames in a second. <laughs> yeah, we, like in the shop, we have these big, like huge bay windows. Like you can see them from the back. Yeah, yeah. And they go all the way to the front and like it's nice in the winter time because the sun will like heat the shop but in the summertime man it gets so hot in here especially with the equipment running yeah. like we can yeah we can't even stand it so I, I finally just this winter got some blinds so we can put up and at least help keep like the sun out so it doesn't get too hot what about that like reflective tint or whatever where it lets the yeah, yeah. you can see but it kind of reflects all the heat out yeah, so like you can see out, but you can't see in. Yeah. Yeah, that was another thing on my list. I have something I wanted to do because that would be nice. Yeah, because then it keeps all the heat up. At least you can see who's coming right. and who's going. Right. Only yeah. then you uh, you wouldn't have the option of keeping the heating up in the winter. So it'd be like, <clears throat> I like the blinds idea. Yeah, right. Because that's the thing is because in the winter time my gas bills are low. A, the equipment and the sun heats up the shop. But and then in the summertime, the AC just constantly runs a keck. Yeah. 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 But, well, don't yeah, mind so Dylan. Don't... He's just a little sun shy. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> because he got, uh, sure. he got, he's all sunburn over here. So he's, oh. he's, he was, I think more, he was just concerned for you and your, oh. and your safety. And if you had some sunscreen or whatever, maybe, you know, you well, can put it on. I just saw the red hair and I was like, dude, you're, 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 you're basically, a, you're basically a day walker right now. Well, I appreciate I appreciate the concern, Dylan. <laughs> I'm just looking out for you, that's all. I'll get my sunscreen. Hold on. Do you want to apply my mask for me? <laughs> yeah, for sure, dude. <laughs> See, that's the thing. That's the that's the gentle part about me is that I don't have any fingernails. I chew them all off. So I, there's no scratches, dude. It's all rubs all around. 
<laughs> yeah, no damage right. can be done. That's why you're the man. Yeah, the exactly. man for the job. Yeah. So what's going on, dude? You're uh, you're in the middle of your shop right now. Yeah, I am. We're actually we're actually on lunch break. I told everyone to take a longer lunch break so we could record uh, record this podcast. Perfect. Yeah, yeah. That dedication right there. I work, yeah, it worked out pretty good because it's one o'clock here p.m. So we just worked till they worked till like quarter to one. Told them to shut it down and then take an hour lunch and then we'll come back and keep crushing it. Yeah. Yeah. How is how is business in Canada? You know, I don't I know yeah. a lot about our friends from the north, but yeah, I do know some good shops up there. Yeah, dude, there's definitely some good shops here. And like we're always busy. So I'm super grateful for that because we're we seem to always be slapped. Like even January and February, the slow times, we're still we still keep pretty busy. But for the most part, dude, you guys crush it. Like can, like the just the industry out where you guys are is a lot more higher and in demand than where we are. Like Every time I go to the States, man, you see everybody always has like company clothing or their swag or their something, right? Construction companies or whoever it is, they're always wearing some sort of t-shirt or hat. Where here, companies kind of let it slide more. Really? So That's weird. Yeah, it is weird, right? Yeah. Because I would even say like 99% of our clientele are construction companies, but it's way bigger where you guys are. Hmm. Funny thing is, is like where I am in New York too, like I have a decent amount of customers that are Canadian. <clears throat> like they just order from here yeah. and we ship it to Canada. No way, really, eh? Yeah. I'm surprised even because like, I'm actually surprised you say that because our dollar is so low. You think it would be more expensive by the time you yeah, change and then they, the exchange rate they, than the brokerage fees? Yeah, and they have to pay the duty fee. Yeah, right? Well, that's the thing. Well, because like even with our suppliers here, um, I tried like this was years ago. I tried to like skip the middleman and then I would order say from independent directly. And dude, it ended up costing me more in the long run to order from them direct because yeah, the shipping and the duties, it was game over. Right. Yeah. So I'm surprised they I'm surprised they, they're able to do that with you, but that's good for you. Yeah, no, it's not bad. Um Christina said that you're kind of somewhat near squints. Yeah, yeah. We're in the we're in the same city. We're probably both like a 10 minute drive away. Quinton, yeah. It's awesome. I love, yeah. I love watching his shop. I just like him in general, but like, he's so he's one of those dudes that's, I feel like every week posts something where he's like yeah. inventing something or making something or very <laughs> yeah, DIY. Yeah. yeah. Dude, Quentin's such a good dude, man. And it works out good because like him and I have like built this relationship over the years. Um, and it's nice because like having a friend like that in the same industry around the same age, and we both have the same demeanor where it's like, if he needs a hand, I help him out. Or if I need a hand, he helps me out. Or like, you know what I mean? If he's low on something, he calls me. If I'm low on something, I can call him. So it's nice that way. Right. Like what is the, what's the approximate population of Saskatoon? Like how big is your city? Um, I think Saskatoon is like 300,000 people right now. Oh, okay. Well, that's yeah, crazy. a lot of people. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, gro it's, it's growing a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Every year it seems to keep on growing. So it's good. And how many shops are there? Dude, there are, there is lots of shops here, but there's lots of those shops where they don't do their own printing. They sub it out to guys like us. Um, but if I were to guess like guys that do their, actually do their own work, probably only like three or four. Not very okay. Many. Yeah. Lots of brokers. Right. But not, not lots of guys like us. And that's where most of your business is from is local or do you, do you ship to like other, mm. you know, like Vancouver or whatever I noticed do you yeah. were considering opening a satellite location or, or whatever kind of location. I don't know if maybe you'll print there too. Yeah. But I, what? yeah. Cause I actually, I, I live in Vancouver. So then, so we're, I'm in the middle of setting that up. Yeah. So, uh, Kind of a long story short, uh, my girlfriend that I met eight years ago, she originally for, was from Vancouver. Uh, then she moved here because she was a news reporter for a local broadcasting station. Um, and then she was always actively looking for work back in Vancouver. Um, so, and it's kind of funny because when I went from the transition from like my garage to like a retail space, uh, I signed my five-year lease on my re retail space. And then like literally four days later, she had an interview with CBC Vancouver and moved out there two weeks later because they wanted oh, to wow. go right away. So the timing just didn't work out. So that this was kind of like my um, whole purpose was going out to Vancouver was so we could like, again, because right now we're doing long distance because I go back and forth between Vancouver and Saskatoon. And so I would like to just get this shop like sustainable two ways that I want to do it. Yes. Have this as like a satellite store that we just print in Vancouver, then ship to Saskatoon. 
or do the two shops thing. But the two shops thing, I think would you know would be a little outlandish just because you you got to double the equipment, double the staff, double everything. And then it just gets to be out of control, right? So, so I have two questions. One, how far is Vancouver? So do you drive it or fly it? How far is it from Saskatoon? Um, it's about, I think, 16 or 1700 kilometers. So it's about an 18 hour, 18 hour drive. Oh. And I was, <laughs> yeah, dude, it's crazy. And I was driving back and forth all the time. Um, because we always, well, in Vancouver, I'd need my truck out there, then I would need my truck here. So I'd have to fly or sorry, I would drive back and forth. And that mm. way I had my vehicle all the time. But now I just started flying. I just got this um, like a cheap little car that I could leave in Saskatoon. Then I have my main oh, vehicle yeah, yeah. In, in Vancouver Then I just fly. So you're flying there on weekends or what are you doing? And because my second part of the question is, yeah. is how do you, how do you juggle or not juggle, but how do you manage a long-term long distance relationship <laughs> with my Dude. girlfriend or my business your girlfriend <laughs> <laughs> dude it's tough it's tough so like so here's the thing about me is before i opened up strength screen printing i actually worked in the oil field for 12 years so i was always out of town anyway right i would work anywhere from like 60 to 90 days straight on a rig in the middle of nowhere so, and she was with me during those times. So that's what we were kind of used to. And then, and it's funny because then I finally build something for myself where I can stay at home and I'm my own boss. And then she moves a couple provinces away. And it's just like, come on, a guy can't catch a break here. <laughs> mm. Right. Like, so, so like, it's, it's good. Like we manage it because like the way I try to do it is like, I'll, I'll be here for two weeks. Then I'll fly back to Vancouver for two weeks then I'll come here for two weeks. So when every time I go back to Vancouver is when I'm trying to like set stuff up there or build the shop or build or just connect with people, build the relationships, right? Just get in front of people. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like the two week mark is a sweet spot of anything yeah. over two weeks is getting a little much. <clears throat> yeah, dude, I, I get pretty grumpy after like day 14, right? Especially because when I'm in Saskatoon, I just, I pretty much just work anywhere from like 16 to 18 hour days. I just keep working because we can just get as much done before I can go back. Right. So by the time, and it's kind of weird because by the time I work all of the hours and then I go, and then I, it's time that I go home, then I go back to Vancouver, then I'm just exhausted. And I'm done for like three or four days. You just need to recoup. Right. So yeah. I'm just, I'm trying to figure it out right now, to be honest with you, how to balance it properly or what to do or what not to do. So yeah. what are you leaning toward? What am I for? Uh, I guess to be honest with you, man, I would love to have Saskatoon as a satellite store and then we can just have like a small location and then we can just print everything out of Vancouver and ship it to Saskatoon. Right. Um, yeah. Cause I mean, we're just so busy here all the time because this is what puts food on the table. Right. So like how it's kind of a weird, another weird thing because going back to Vancouver, a guy's back to shaking hands and kissing babies again. Right. You pretty much got to start again from ground up, but at least you have like the tools and the knowledge now to start out there which is good. So um, I think that would be the direction because then that way, at least if, I'm, if, we're, if the shop or we're doing production is where I live, then at least I can like manage it more. You know what I mean? Or for something breaks yeah, down. Yeah. I, you know, uh, yeah. You know what it's like. It's right? just so. the, it's just the satellite location thing to me is always like what's in the back of my mind is who's going to run it and who's going to run it. Well, you know what I mean? Like you can't be there and all yeah. that stuff. So like, that's the question is how do you manage that? Yeah. So like we got a pretty good team here, man. I mean like my sales guy batting, I think I would pretty much just get him to kind of run it because he would be in the shop anyway, Monday to Friday. And then when clients need to pick things up or drop things off. And then because the, the, the people here would still be dealing with me because we ship Canada wide anyway. We do work all, for companies all around BC, Alberta, a little bit of Manitoba. We do work for guys all the way out in Toronto, PEI, all over the place. Right. So it's kind of right. it'd be the same thing pretty much. Right. I feel like you could still run production out of Saskatoon only because if you're you know, if you have the right people in place, yeah, they could run production for you, right? There could be a production manager sure. or an ops manager or something like that. And you could go to Saskatoon, probably, you could probably make it happen maybe even just once a month, like maybe one weekend, I don't know about yeah. weekend, but maybe a Monday, Tuesday, whatever, yeah. Wednesday, yeah. and spend a few days there <clears throat> once a month and then fly back to Vancouver. Because otherwise yeah. you're going to lose, I don't know how many days ground shipping if it's two days to Vancouver and two days. Is, so yeah. you lose four yeah. days shipping. Well, I mean, if somebody's dropping something off, but if you're not, I guess you would just start in Vancouver ship it. You only lose two days. So it's not that bad, but yeah. still, you know, if you had a shipping team costs, up there, 
Yeah, shipping, shipping costs. costs. Yeah, there you go. I mean, you can just turn around and everything. I think that. Yeah. I feel like you could you could manage if you like your space there. Um, then you just open another production since you're going to be staying in Vancouver so much more. You'd open another production, yeah. um, you know, facility in Vancouver. And, Vancouver. and if, if one of the that'd be kind of cool because if one of the other, let's say one was crazy busy and stacked <clears> up with <throat> orders. And maybe the other one could help out and ship down for two days. You can almost balance out a little bit. You know what I mean? Then, yeah, totally. Then you could just, yeah, just feed off of both shops. If one's packed, you could do the next one and just do whatever you got to do. Yeah. Totally. Of course, that's bigger investment because you're going to have to buy another exposure unit and another, you know, the whole thing. You got to yeah, buy a whole nother yeah. shop. Basically. Pretty much. Yeah. yeah inks, emulsion, exposure mm -hmm. unit, equipment, the whole nine yards. Right. Like, so, and that's what I mean. So that's where I'm kind of caught crosshairs. So I'm just trying to do some experimenting too, and to see like what'll work or, or whatever. Right. So right. Mm -hmm. again, it's just like, I just don't want to up and leave like the Saskatoon market because again, we're just so busy here all the time. It's just so, if we could just keep, keep that little keep that little store and then just have someone run it properly or whatever. Right. So I'll have to do some, some work and see what's going to work the best, but. So what made you want to go from oil rigs to screen printing? Crazy dude. <laughs> Quite the change in lifestyle. It seems like that might have been a good, uh, good income. <laughs> yeah. Like it, it was good, man. I mean, like, um, cause 12 years out there, I obviously like moved up through the ranks. And like, even out there, my salary was over 200,000 a year. A guy was making good money, but again, dude, like the lifestyle just isn't worth it. You're always out of town. I never know where, where I'm coming or where I'm going and work. Like I said, I was working anywhere from 60 to 90 days straight, have a week off, go out again for 90 days. Like, it's just not, it's a young man, young man's game, man. You know? So, um, I, looking at the long run, it's just like the older I get, it's just like, I don't want to do this anymore. I don't want to just keep, yeah. Yeah. Right. And, and also too, out there, you don't have there just because it's minus 50 doesn't mean you have a day off. You work at minus 50 plus 50, there's no breaks. So it's just kind of like one of those things where I just knew I had to get out of it. And I always did like screen printing as a passion project. So like uh, when we were younger in grade nine and 10, they actually had a, like an art class where you could do like photography and screen printing and whatever else it was. Mm -hmm. So this, so that's kind of where it started. And like, when we were kids, we couldn't afford brand name clothing. So what we would do is we would go to the screen printing class and like print ourselves like DC shirts and iPath shirts and try to be cool, right? Because we couldn't afford brand name clothing growing up, man. So that's, awesome. that's yeah, yeah, it was sick. So that's kind of how it all started. Then I always just did it as a passion project on the side. It's funny because you're kind of making my argument for me. Like I had some calls when I was in Florida. There's a spot where I like to go walk. And it's like by the beach and it's, I don't know, it's like five miles or something. And I'm walking and I call Andy and I'm having a conversation with him about like employees and about pay and about um, just, you know, regular stuff and regular struggles, whatever. And then I call TC and I'm talking to him for a while. And then I call fucking Tony at, at Tiny Fish and I'm talking to him for a while. And it's just funny because you get this thing in your brain of like as an owner when it comes to people coming and going and, you know, if there's like a drama situation or somebody leaves and this because of work conditions or something. And it's just like, <clears throat> you know, they're like, Oh, I could go here and I could make X amount of dollars or something, you know, that discussion. And right. it's like, I'm, I get that. That's cool. But like, also you got to realize like, and I always say this and I'm not really not trying to talk down upon myself or anything. And I, I feel like a lot of us printers would see the same thing. It's like, okay, once you go get a real job, like you'll realize what you had here. Oh, dude, totally. Because I always never think of this as, I mean, I think of this as a real job, but like, I always think like yeah. the amount of fucking around we do and the amount of like, just like having fun and doing what we're doing yeah. and printing shirts isn't the same as like working like a desk job for a large corporation where like, if you fuck around, they're just gonna be like, get out of here. Like yeah, we'll dude. hire somebody else. Well, man, that's the thing. And I, and I try to fucking explain that to everybody. I'm like, dude, we all have it so fucking good here. So it's like it, if we can all just do our job and do it good and everyone's happy, then the shop makes money. You guys make money. There's more money for raises, bonuses, staff events. The shop grows. We all do good, right? Yeah. Yes. So and you're right. But to guys like you, me and Andy, it's like, dude, this isn't work. This is what we love. So this isn't work to us, right? We, yeah, yeah. we can do this all day, every day. So it doesn't really even matter. Yeah. But, right? 
And the part it, of that though that I don't want to like, I don't want this to be a thing where people think I'm saying, okay, well, I can pay less because it's a fun work environment. No, That's not what I'm trying not. to say. I'm yeah. trying to say that I want to cover people as much as humanly possible. Like I want to pay everyone here as much as I can for the job that they're doing and everything. Yeah. It's just you gotta also realize at a certain point, like this is a screen printing shop. Yeah. Like, this is not you're not a you're not a doctor or you're not a lawyer. Like it's not yeah. like you're gonna be making, you know, eighty dollars an hour pulling shirts off the dryer. No, there's a cap, right? There's obviously a cap for what the position is worth. And I agree, right? Like you can get to a certain point, but at least again, yeah, if if, if like shops like us that pay decent wages and people want to stay around, like you said, we have a pretty good day. Like it's not stressful. No one's yelling at you. No one's monitoring what you do 24 seven, right? Like it's a pretty good place to work. I would think. And you're absolutely right. Cause I went from working in the oil patch to like this. And it's just like, man, anything after that is gravy train. Like we can do it. We can make it happen. Yeah, <laughs> yeah for sure. I think, um, I think quality of life matters. I think what you're doing. Big time. That's a good thing too. Yeah. I think that, you know, being part of a team that's, that's putting out good work and that's working on projects that they care about. And they're, they're always trying to up their game, you know, trying to, trying to do a good job. I think yeah. being on, on that team or a team like <clears throat> that, that a lot of people, um, is more important anyway than pay, you know, I mean, yep. I'm not, don't, don't get me wrong. It's very important. You need to, everyone has budgets and we, and we need to get paid right. a certain amount because we have bills, but you know, being at, working for a company where they care and they care about what they're making and what they're doing and making cool shit, that's, that's worth, that's, that's important, I think. For sure. I think so too. And here's a, like a really good example of that. Even my sales guy, he's actually, he went to school for mm -hmm. civil engineering and um, that's just now he's, he doesn't do that. And he's doing sales for me. Mm -hmm. And he just turned down a $150,000 a year job because he said the work environment and quality of life is much better here because he'd go work for some firm. And then hate his life. Sure, yeah, he right. more money, but like, yeah, right. And then he's gonna hate his life. Working right. again, like working in a cubicle somewhere. He's like, yeah, I'd rather stay here. Yeah, he makes less. Unfortunately, I can't pay him one hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year, but mm -hmm. the quality of life is higher here, right? Right. Yeah. Well, that, like I said, I'm not trying to be an, arg an argument for a boss and all this other stuff. I'm just more trying to say that, like, like you said, like you were making really good money doing the oil thing, but you're like, I'm never home. I'm out in the middle of this weather. I'm doing yeah. this thing. And it's like, realistically, if you think about it, like you're at work sometimes more than you're at home. Like For you sure. get up in yeah. the morning, you go to work, you do your thing. You're done by five o'clock. You're kind of tired. You make your dinner, you watch your TV or you do whatever you're going to do, your hobby. And you go to bed and you do it over again the next day. Like yeah. you want your go to Monday through Friday to be fucking miserable. Totally. Or do you want to be like, you know, I do make less money, but also like. I have fun with the people I'm working with. Like I have options to just have more mm -hmm. of a chill day. Yeah. Like to me, that's worth money or not necessarily money, but it's worth, it's like, worth said, like quality of life. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, you know, you know what I, what really irks me is that, you know, I would love to pay double everyone here. Like what they yeah, get now, same. I would love to yeah. double what they get paid, but I was on a call, uh, a zoom call be earlier today with our um, insurance renewals. And so we have group health here and our renewal is coming in two months. And so every single year I have this call every single year, they say, well, here's your current plan and here is the plan next year. And guess what? It's more money yeah. and it's up, it's up this much more money. And you just know that's coming before I even got on the call. I knew that they were going to say, Hey, your, your plan's going up. And so you can pay more money every month or you can choose a higher deductible or take away some benefits. Right. And so you have to make those choices. Yeah. So here I am thinking like, I've done this with customers. I've said, Hey, you know, a customer calls up. We actually, we just had one um, that, you know, came here um, in 2019 and now they're ordering again, like the same order. And, and then you tell them that the price is up, that has gone up and they're like, Whoa, Whoa, Whoa. <laughs> you know, like, what do you mean? And so it's like, well, that's right? a big jump. 2019 <laughs> yeah. to 24. That's, that's I, like, know, that's five, I know. That's, that's like getting years. a gallon yeah, of milk but, for a nickel. <laughs> but even last year, I, st I still get, I still get for people sure. that it's, Hey, prices, guess what? Prices have gone up. Prices have gone up on every single, you know, um, supply we use and, and every, yeah. and also labor, everybody's getting paid more every single year. Yeah. And so it's like, you tell that to our customers with t-shirts 
And they're yeah. like, whoa, whoa, whoa. You know, like I pay five dollars for my T-shirts. That's it. No, yeah. never again. Like in the year 2090, I'm paying five <laughs> yeah. fucking bucks. And like but with 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 insurance, we're like, accept it. We're like, fine, whatever. Well, it's more money. Well, yeah. And so that's exactly it. So then so this is like so this is like the line, I guess, that we walk. So what happens? Yeah. So our consume our consumables go up more. Our rent goes up more. Our insurance goes up more. You know what I mean? And heaven forbid we charge more for our product. And then it's just like, how the fuck are we supposed to recoup those costs? And same thing, like, like for us, for me to sell you an $8 t-shirt is cheap in the, in Canada. Right. So I tell people all the time, I'm like, dude, when I, I can sell you a $8 t-shirt with a one color print, I don't know how much fucking money you think I make off an $8 <laughs> shirt, but it's not much pal. Like it can't <laughs> fucking go any lower. <laughs> right. right. I'm like, I don't even think you can go to Walmart in Canada to buy a fucking mm. $8 shirt. I just made you one with the custom logo on it. Pal. <laughs> yeah. You know? yeah. <laughs> so true. You see, have you guys seen these things now where it's, uh, what is it? I can't remember what they call it. It's, I want to say it's like fake flation or something where like, uh, like an example I saw the other day was like Coca-Cola used to sell like a 16 ounce can for like a dollar, say a dollar 50 or whatever. And now they have the same amount of soda in a can, but they made the can a little bit uh, <laughs> less around, but it's taller and they mm -hmm. charge two thirty five for it now. But that's what it, you look at it and you're like, oh, it's a bigger can. Like it's worth two twenty five, but it's the exact same amount of ounces. It's, exactly it's just a taller can, but it's like, yeah, it's, and they do that with all these different things now where it's like, mm -hmm. um, you know, they say like value size or whatever. And it's like a box of this next to the other thing, but the actual contents on the inside are the same. Yeah. Exactly. It's always it's with so they can get away with saying that they're charging more, but it's the same fucking product. It's, it's always with product. the chips yeah. too, right? You open your bag yeah. of chips and they're like half gone already. Yeah. It seems like yeah. every year they, the bag gets lower and lower. Right? The, funny thing, <laughs> the funny thing about the chip thing is my son is using that against me because he's a notorious, like, He's that kid where like you go buy groceries and then that night they're gone. Like certain things are gone already because I'll buy a bag of like Lay's potato chips and I'll I'll like go do my own thing at the at the house and I'll come back out and he'll have the bag and it'll be gone. Yeah. And I'm like, dude, you ate that whole fucking bag. He's like half of it's air. And I'm like, <laughs> you it still ate a fucking entire bag, of chips. <laughs> not like a little one, like a normal one. He's just it like, does, mm. it doesn't take much to crush a bag of chips these days, you know? I know. <laughs> but even the chips, like chips are what, like four something a bag or five bucks yeah. a bag or something. And it's like they're five. Yeah. Five or six bucks. But a that's bag. the argument Andy's making is like a customer yeah. from 2019 is like, oh, my God, it went up. It's like, dude. Yeah. You could be here last week and then ask me for a quote this week. And the fucking thing might be more. Well, yeah. And you know, what's funny is I, cause like with clients like that, I'm like, yeah, then, so you're going to nickel and dime me on my prices, but yet you're going to go to the store and pay like $120 for a hoodie. And you're saying my $40 hoodie is too much yeah. with your custom logos on it. There's no way. No, yeah, I know. Yeah. So I heard you fell off a ladder. I did, man. Yeah. Crazy story. I did. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, dude, no one, where is that? I thought it was. So do you see that ladder? Can you right reenact there? it for us real quick? <laughs> well, I, I might get you to reenact it, Dylan. <laughs> so, so it's crazy. Yeah. So I fell off a ladder and I broke my arm and my leg at the same time. Did yeah. you just like land fully sideways? I did. Yeah. So this is so that I'll, I'll kind of just explain the story. So did you just, bounce? I think I did. I was by myself. <laughs> <laughs> I had to. So I was... So this spot that I'm in right now, this is actually, it's a strip mall and it, there's about like eight bays in here, but it's like an industrial strip mall. So I was just a couple bays over and we were moving from that bay to this bay because the space I'm in now uh, is bigger than the last one. So whatever. Uh, but it was, it was, I was working over there on a Saturday by myself and um, I was all working on the ladder trying to take down a light fixture and I was on the second rung from the top, probably a little bit too high to begin with. And I was reaching out and I reached out too far and the ladder kicked out from underneath me and my leg got caught in the rung, which, uh. broke, my, which broke my leg. And then I had my drill in my hand. And then when I fell, it broke my arm too at the same time. So that sucks. Yeah, dude, it was crazy. Did you so know I right was, away, like when you hit the ground, like I broke I, shit? I did it, dude. So this is, yeah, I did not know. 
So this is the thing. It's like I was laying on the ground and like the wind was knocked the fuck out of me. I'm just like, oh, I'm trying to like catch my breath and just like think about what happened. And I'm laying there and I'm catching my breath. And I'm finally like, I'm like, after like a couple minutes, I'm like, okay, Matt, it's time to get up. And I go to push myself up off the ground and my arm was shaped like a U. And I'm like, oh no, then went into panic mode and looked down and my leg was like completely sideways. And so, and again, I was by myself. So the guy next to me um, is that was actually a restaurant. So, and then the on the other side of me was um, actually a sleep country. So they sell mattresses. Mm. So like I'm yelling for help. And then after like a couple of minutes, I come to the conclusion, I'm like, man, no one's going to hear you. You got to get to your phone. And my phone was on the table across from the shop. So I'm like, okay, just get to your phone and you can call for help. So I crawled across the shop floor, like they just uh, like, yeah. Like so army crawl. crawl. Yeah. army crawl and as i'm like crawling dude i could watch my leg like slithered behind me and i'm just like oh my god so i get to the, so i get to my phone i hoist myself on the table get to my phone call 911 paramedics show up uh fire trucks show up cops show up all these people and um so when paramedics show up you actually have to have a special uh, certificate to administer like drugs like fentanyl or whatever right so the paramedics that were there they didn't have that certificate. So we had to wait for this guy to show up. So while I was laying on the ground, they had an ID on my arm and the so ID. Why did you need fentanyl? Because I was in so much pain. He just wanted wouldn't. it. <laughs> 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 well, here, I actually didn't want it because I used to have a drug and alcohol problem. So I told them mm -hmm. that I didn't want it. Right. So, but the guy said to me, he's like, look, man, there's no way that we're going to get you onto this stretcher into the ambulance and then down the road into the hospital without you being in severe pain. So he's like, man, just suck it the fuck up, take the fentanyl and you're going to deal with the problem later. Okay. And I was like, okay, fine. Fuck it. So, but I see why people get addicted to that shit. And like, I could feel it kick in, like literally from the tip of my toes to the last hair on my head, I could feel it. It was insane. Do they do that here in like America? Do, when an ambulance shows up and you're injured, do they just give you pain? I figured I, I in know. Canada, they would have just gave him a swig of like maple syrup and he would have been like, <laughs> fucking, I'll be fixed. I would have just been printed t shirts the next <laughs> right. time. Right. So, yeah. Like some fucking poutine and some syrup, and he would have been like, good to go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so just wait, dude. It gets it gets even funnier. So, like when I was laying on the ground and I had the ID in my arm and the bag was taped on the wall. So the proper paramedic shows up and he goes to walk around me, but he like he goes to like step over my Please ID tell me he right? Dude, he did. He fucking tripped on the ID cord and hit the ground, ripped the ID right on my arm. He hits the ground and he was like this old, like 50 some year old guy. And he's like, he's like, oh, oh, he's like, I just need a minute. Oh. And I was just yelling at everyone. I'm like, is this fucking happening right now? You guys, what is going on here? So he sits down for like 10 minutes before like he can administer the drugs. And he this whole time you're on the ground. Yeah, man, I'm on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude, I'm on the ground waiting to go and get into the ambulance to go to the hospital. <laughs> it was such a shit show, dude. Such a shit show. But I guess, yeah. hey, all I'm hearing is that's what you get with free health care. <laughs> yeah. And, yes. and you know what's funny, man, is I totally agree with you. Yeah, sure. Our health care may be. Free, I'm totally kidding. kidding. I don't care at all. Like, I, I just wanted to say that out loud. Yeah, yeah. But our health care system <laughs> does suck. It may be free, but it does suck. I don't, I don't care about any of it. I I don't go to the doctor. I rarely, I, I went today because I got yelled at by a friend that told me to go to the doctor. So oh, yeah. I went to the doctor, but yeah, wow. I don't, I don't know. The It's funny. Two, two parts to the latter story. I watch all that shit like on Instagram reels and stuff where the funniest thing to me is when the husband is out front working on a ladder and he falls off the ladder or the ladder collapses or something. And the wife hears the noise and comes running out. And he like quickly stands up and is like, oh, nothing happened. I'm totally fine. I'm totally fine. Like mm -hmm. there's a ton of videos of that. And you could tell this dude like watching from the camera that like he is in so much pain. Like you, I just picture you like some girl jogs by or something and you stand up like, yeah, I'm totally fine. Like <laughs> yeah, yeah. wind knocked out of you, <laughs> arm broken, leg broken. You're just like limping it off. Right. Yeah. Just trying to look act tough. You know, I, <laughs> yeah. I hear like that swinging. Yeah. They say, yeah. I think they say that 
um, like a trampoline is the number one injury at home or whatever it is. You say that. But I feel like ladder has to be right there, like at number, almost tied or number two. Yeah, yeah I think they say on construction sites, ladders are like the number one cause of injury. I'm pretty sure. That's what they yeah. say, yeah. I agree. My grandfather used to own a restaurant and he was doing the exact same thing you were doing. He was on a really tall ladder because they had super high ceilings and he was changing a light bulb and he fell off the ladder, but he just fell off of it. Like he, he, he had to like jump cause he was starting to fall. But oh, when yeah. he landed, he landed knees locked feet straight <laughs> oh. and it shattered both ankles. Like no he, way. he had to walk with a cane for like the rest of his life. Like he That's crazy. just turned, he said he turned his ankles into like mashed potatoes. Like they were just yeah. like crushed. Man. And you know, what's funny is I felt kind of ashamed for like falling off a ladder. And, and then as soon as you fall off the ladder, then everyone shares like their ladder story with you <laughs> and you'd be surprised how many people have fallen off a ladder. Like <laughs> I fell through yeah. when I was probably, I want to say either like 12 or 14, I fell through a three story barn uh, from the top all the way to the bottom. We couldn't, we were too short in, I don't know if people know about barns or whatever, but on the bottom of the barn, there's a ladder that kind of goes up from the bottom all the way to the top. That's like mounted to the wall. And there's just holes right like a hole around you that goes through the floor and you can climb all the way to the top on well, the bottom. To hay bales through the yeah. Hay. Well, on the bottom, yeah. we were too short to reach the ladder. So we put like this some, for some reason there was like a weight bench with like the, you know, the hook curl thing to put the, the bar on. Yeah. We put that on and then we stood on that and then got to the ladder and climbed to the top. Well, we were in the very top, like making a fort or something. And we put this thin piece of like, like thin wall wood or something over the hole for some reason. And I was walking around not paying attention. And I walked on that hole like a cartoon. And I was like thump, through the first one, through the second floor, hit the bottom. But my chest hit that like curl thing on the weight bench. Mm. And it just like super knocked the wind out of me. Pretty sure I broke a bunch of ribs, whatever. <laughs> and again, I was like, you know, we were kids, no cell phones, no nothing. You're just at a friend's house up the road. Mm. I remember like walking home, but I thought I was going to die. Like my chest was like fucking <laughs> caved in. <laughs> just fell Dude, three yeah. stories. <laughs> it seems like when you're a kid, you can just suck that stuff up a lot. Yeah. More. I got home and, <laughs> yeah. and my dad in typical fashion was like, Oh, you'll be fine. You know, like two pats on the back, like fucking sleep it off or whatever. Yeah, I think probably, uh, <laughs> probably once you pass 25, you should just be not allowed on the ladder. That'd be, that's probably the, the best that's move ideal. anyway. <laughs> I was thinking, I had this thought the other day. So how much of your identity or like your self-worth, I guess, is tied into your business? So like Ooh. upstate and strength, like, how much of, of your business is who you are? And let's say, for example, like if you were to sell it, you know, because right now I identify like a Mandy from Shirt Kong. I have this t-shirt shop and all of a sudden I don't have this shop. You know, that's my sort of my identity. That's what I've known. Yeah. This is what I've known for a very long time. And so what am I like without this place? And I'm not saying that I'm, I'm not saying that I don't have like, I'm not, not confidence or whatever. I'm just, I'm just saying like, without this, this is, this is sort of how I identify. And so, how much of, of your shop, like, what do you guys think about this, this, this thought I had anyway? Man, I would say, I would say like majority of I, I, what you're saying is correct. And I think, and I think you're absolutely right because like people know me as like, Matt is like strength screen printing or like, this is what I do. And I kind of think the same thing. Like if I didn't have this, I think I'd be lost a little bit. You know what I mean? Like this is who I am. And you're right. Yeah. I think for me doing it, for so long like at this point i've been doing screen printing longer than i've not been doing screen printing yeah so and it's not like i'm just like a quiet screen printer either like i fucking try to get involved in like industry stuff as much as possible like do this podcast and like on the board the gildan board thing and fucking all these other things i feel like if all that went away like i just wouldn't know what to do with myself like I do once in a while, I do have this fantasy because I do love doing it is like, I love like lawn care stuff and I love woodworking. So that's why like, it's fun for me on this building when me and my dad get to like build shit or like at the house, we like rebuilt shit. I feel like if I dropped everything today and was like, fuck this whole thing, I would just like build my house, build a barn next to it and buy all the woodworking tools I wanted. And I would just like 
build shit like cabinets and furniture and so maybe you should do that now because it's just i think it's is it healthy to be so tied to like my identity anyway be so tied to this shop so like when i'm out and i meet people for the first time if i'm introduced to somebody and the the subject comes up of like what i do for a career what i do for a living everything i just say a print t-shirts i never really mention at what scale or like whatever I own it. I, you know, I don't usually bring that up until, unless they, unless we keep going more about it. But if I didn't have that, then what do I say? Like, let's say um, the way I meet somebody, like, what do you do? And if I don't do anything, well, then that's pretty like lame. And so like, shouldn't I have something else that I identify as that's more important than my job? Cause I know this is more yeah. than a job for us, but like for, I, we're founders of companies, which is, it takes a lot of time. But isn't it weird that we're so tied up into this career instead of just something else that we love? Like, can oh, I, I love. And that, I know but, exactly what you're saying. Can I say something that I feel like all of us printers and business owners in the print world are going to relate to is that I feel like I only matter in this industry and is, is in this industry. Like, I feel like I only matter as like my shop status or whatever or what we can do to other screen printers if i leave the screen printing world and i go to like some business development thing or like a chamber thing or whatever and somebody mentions that dylan owns a screen printing shop i always feel 12 years old <laughs> yeah i always feel like yeah. this guy who's like a lawyer or this guy who owns this fucking you know hedge fund thing or whatever comes up to me and like gives me a pat on the head and is like How's your little t-shirt thing going? You know what I mean? Like I yeah. can fucking be in my element here or at a trade show or something and know, like, I feel like I'm doing pretty well. Like, I feel like I'm successful in my career and I'm doing what I want to yeah. do. And as soon as I leave my bubble of screen printers and I, like, I go into the real world, it's like, I'm nothing. Like I'm meaningless. Like, I'm like, cool. You, they, Cause they instantly <clears throat> think I'm in my mom's basement printing t-shirts. <laughs> like, and it, Right. So like you pretty much feel like that other you would say listening to what you're saying is you feel like other professions don't take you seriously because you None. Teach them. Yeah. Right. But then and you and you're right, because people don't know it on the scale that guys like, oh, you for sure. Do it, right. Yeah. They have no idea. They have no, I have people, they have no idea. I have people I, I've known my whole life that know what I do. And then they come to town or something and they just come in the shop and I show them the business and they're like, oh, my God, I did not realize this is what you do. Right. But that only happens when they're here. Mm -hmm. Like if I leave the real world and go to dinner, like if I go to say I was to go to dinner with friends in Binghamton or something and I was meeting new people or whatever, like and I said what I did again, I would instantly get that feeling of like, oh, this guy's a fucking was there a joke on mm -hmm. Seinfeld or something or something like that where he's like, oh, I screen printed T-shirts or whatever. And they were just like. <laughs> Like they were on a date or whatever. It might not be I Seinfeld because I fucking can't stand that show. <laughs> yeah. But one of those where it's just like they were like, "Wow, this is this guy's a fucking douche." At the same time, I was on. There were two guys came by here, uh, sales salesmen, uh, selling me something, um, and I met with them a few weeks ago. Not a screen printing industry stuff, selling me something else, or trying to, and. They were here, we were chatting for a little bit and I said, hey, you want a tour? I'll show you around. And so I did. And they were like, their minds were blown. Yeah. And they were like, oh my God, this is crazy. And then I remember going on a walk with, uh, later that night with Joanne and we were on our walk and I told her, you know, I was talk telling her about my day. I'm like, yeah, you know, I give a tour. I talked to these two guys, I gave them a tour and everything. And I felt really, really good because um, I was like, man, I made the right choice in life, you know, because I wouldn't want to do what they're doing. You know, the thing that they were doing. And maybe they love it. I'm not trying to shit on what they're doing, but I'm so happy and so proud of what we have here and what what like I've built and we built. And it felt really good, you know? And so like, I think that maybe they, they, they pat you on the head and they're like, oh, this little t-shirt shop when you're not, when you're not like at the shop, but when you are, it's, it is, it's very impressive. Like it's a pretty fucking cool thing. And I think a lot of people would trade shoes with you. They would trade. They would be like, yeah, oh, I, I get love that. To do but that. I'm saying mm -hmm. to your argument, well, it wasn't an argument, but to your point before of like, mm -hmm. do you feel like if you went away from this, it was your whole identity? I feel yeah, like yeah. I only That's have this identity in this bubble. Right. But I, but I think what Andy's also trying to say is like, all we do is fucking screen print. We don't do anything else. So it's like, 
right? So it's kind of like when do you, when do you find something else to do while you own your business, right? Oh, but you for can sure. do yeah, yeah. you can like say I can identify I like to go like quadding or sledding, right? And then mm-hmm. I would be I could identify as that outside of my business and what I do. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's outside I think, of hobbies. I think as founders, it, it takes so much time during the startup phase. And then sometimes even thereafter, you get wrapped up into everything else that you neglect other hobbies or other interests or other likes and you become your identity <clears throat> becomes this shop. And like, that's what it is. And so then all of a sudden, if you were to leave this shop, when what what am I? You know, like, what is yeah. my identity? And do you need that? Do you even need it? I don't know. That was, that but, was me the entire yeah. time I was married, though. That was the, you know, part of my I don't know, whatever you want to call it, fucking reawakening or whatever is. When I had to start over, I had to realize like, hey, I've been doing nothing but going home, going to bed, waiting for tomorrow yeah. for years. Yeah. Like I put all of my energy into dealing with the family stuff and then dealing with work. And then I never did anything for myself other than more yeah. print related shit or more travel or whatever. And it's like I needed to find things that I really wanted to do. And for me, one of my favorite things is like, being outside or like I said, like the woodworking thing or whatever. And it's like, I love hiking and being outside and just like doing that kind of thing. So I've been doing so much more of that. And, you know, I want to get into a couple more hobbies that I've always loved and wanted to do, but yeah, yeah, I I get what you're saying is I just need to do. And me and Andy have had this discussion before, but like, I kind of want to start another business that has nothing to do with this at all, where it's just (laughs) a fun thing. Like I've, I've had a couple ideas. Like I've been wanting to do this movie theater thing, which I'll probably still do. Yeah. kind of want to start like a craft soda company. Like, I don't know. There's just a couple things that I'm like, I should just do this thing too, just to get that spark of like a new creative outlet. That's not here. That's not just screen printing. Cause I think like when, when, with people like say people that are like a high performer, I would, I would put us in that category because our businesses are doing what they're doing. So when you're not doing, so when you're not in the shop or when you're not like working, you beat yourself up and you make yourself feel bad because you feel like you're being lazy and you should be doing work in the shop. Right. So then you're not making time for other important things that you want to do in your life. And I, and I, and I agree. And I find myself, I'm in that point where I'm trying to get like, where can I, how can I free up more of my time? So I'm not, so I'm not working 16 hour days every day. Like how do you, when do you get to that point? Do you ever get to that point? You guys, you guys have been in this game a lot longer than I have. So it's like, when, when do you get to the point where you work, say example, like Monday to Friday, nine to five, is that a thing? Do you do that? Or do you just work seven days a week forever? I don't know. Right. And I'm just trying to get myself to that point. I don't know. I feel like Andy, we're kind of both in a similar boat right now where we can walk away and do whatever we want to do. And the shop runs itself. Right. It took a long time to get to that point, but yeah. production wise. Yes. But I'm production still, wise. Yeah. I think about still... the business 24 seven. Like it never ends. Like I'll be on a walk at, like, you know, in the morning and I'm fucking in the middle of nowhere doing a thing and I'll have an idea about some customer I want to contact or this other thing. And I'm emailing myself, I'm calling people, I'm doing this other thing. It's like, I should just shut the fuck up and go for a walk. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's what I like, mean. Yeah. Because you probably, right. You're out for a walk and it's just like, just enjoy it. Don't think about work. Right. right. I can't help yeah. it though. That's what I'm saying. I was in Florida, like just hanging out and I was walking six miles by the beach and the entire time I was on the phone with my friends, like talking about work. <laughs> yeah. like, you know what I mean? It's like, I'm in this, you know, beautiful area and it's, I'm, I'm just on the phone trying to figure out problems and yeah. everything else. So, I mean, yeah. it, I don't think it's ever going to leave us. I think that's the entrepreneur part of you just are always trying to solve the next problem but i think so i think that's true but to your to that i would say sometimes the best way to solve the problem is when you're not in the shop and so being on the beach that day you were calm you weren't emotion emotion emotional (laughs) see you're Uh, doing it right now we're talking about emotions and you're talking about emotion (laughs) yeah (laughs) you know and so like i think that if you're trying to make some hard decisions sometimes it's best not to be in those you know, oh, for sure. yeah, yeah. Your shop. sometimes it's good to be away. Yeah. And I figured, I figured a lot of that stuff out that day, you know, all the things I was troubled with, I, you know, consulted my friends and I'm in a better spot now. So it's, yeah. it's all good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, do you have a, Matt, do you have a question that you would like to ask screen print GPT? 
screen screen print GPT. Yeah. What's that? Our good friend Matt Marcotte made a uh, AI tool called ScreenPrintGPT.com, where it's basically just for screen printers and the industry, where you can ask it any question, screen print related, and it gives you an AI generated answer that no. basically scrubs the internet and scrubs all of these like papers and findings and everything people have talked about for screen printing yeah. to get you the correct answer. But wow. the best part about it is it's so quick so knowledgeable but also it you don't have to feel shitty to ask that question you know what i mean like if you honestly had a print question you didn't know who to reach out to and you post it on like facebook or instagram or something you're gonna get hated on so hard by other printers being like yeah. idiot how do you not know that answer yeah what do you now mean you, you can go on some, print under base <laughs> yeah now you can go on this thing and you can type it in and it will give you you know whatever eight to ten things that could solve your problem or you know just straight up give you the answer so me That's and andy insane. me and andy love matt in general like he's a great friend of ours but also we're like he's also super smart at all this stuff and we are big advocates for screen print gpt because it's such a great tool for printers to be able to just ask the question and get a quick answer yeah so we've been trying to implement this into the show and ask people if they have a question for it. If you don't have a question, that's totally fine. We have some questions kind of queued up to ask it. Yeah, well, just so it. you know, for the future, if you do want to ask a question that has anything to do with printing, just go yeah. to screenprintgpt.com. It's free. You don't have to pay anything. Um, he got some good sponsors, including us, to this is actually pretty crazy. make it I free. Had... Actually, you know what's funny? As I think, I, okay, so I remember on another episode, you guys asked it how to print on a pocket of a hoodie, right? Yeah. And it, yeah. Told, you, and it, and it told you to spray, the one thing said to spray uh, adhesive inside the pocket. The pocket, yeah. Yeah, not, yeah, yeah. Because I, I remember you guys were talking about it. You're like, the funny pocket. thing about that is I had a lot of DMs. <laughs> yeah. We had a lot of DMs after that episode came out of people saying, yeah, I've done that forever. That's what I do for all these big band hoodies and all this other stuff. So By spraying web adhesive inside the pocket? Not no, web, not, just not like web. a mist. And they do <laughs> oh, make a... Well, it's a starch. Uh, yeah, starch they make a, a starch-based oh, spray okay. that'll, that'll just wash out with a wash. Yep. Right. Right, uh, right, right. Go ahead, Andy. What is your question? So we have a question here is, why is my ink post-bleeding? What do you think of that okay. one? Yeah, sure. Ask it. All right, here we go. Do you see, Matt, like how quickly it's just giving you like all these technical answers? This is actually insane. I can't believe this. Yeah, I can't believe someone didn't build this sooner. This is a smart idea. <clears throat> yeah. All right. So it says uh, ink post bleeding can occur for several reasons in screen printing and addressing these factors may help you uh, mitigate the issue. Here are a few potential causes and their solutions based on the documents you've provided and general knowledge. There's a lot here. Yeah, uh, number one, ink viscosity and mesh count. Using an ink that's too fluid for the chosen mesh can cause it to bleed beyond the desired print area. Ensure your ink viscosity matches the mesh count you're using for detailed work. Uh, number two is emulsion thickness and exposure. Insufficient or uneven emulsion thickness, EOM can lead to poor ink control on the screen. Uh, number three, squeegee pressure and angle. Excessive pressure or incorrect squeegee angle can force ink through the screen more aggressively, causing it to spread on the substrate. Number four, substrate preparation. Pre-treating your fabric or ensuring the it's suitable for the type of ink you're using can impact how well the ink sits on the, on the surface. Mm -hmm. uh, number five, curing and drying parameters. Insufficient or uneven curing can lead to ink not setting properly on the fabric, which might cause bleeding as the ink remains too fluid and migrates into unwanted areas. Ensure that your curing temperature and duration match the ink manufacturer specifications. Number six, screen tension and, and stability. Low screen tension can cause issues with print fidelity leading to ink bleeding, ensuring your screens are properly tensioned and stable during the print process to maintain accurate print details. So basically a lot of this is just saying, you know, check your, your ink and how much you're laying down if you're forcing it too hard into the garment. And a lot of it has to do with your curing and drying parameters. Yeah. So, so if you didn't know this already, I know a lot of you know this already with, you know, using like poly garments and all this other stuff. Yeah. If you didn't know and you were curious in your shop, Hey, this is my first poly job, or I'm just not familiar with printing stuff like this. And why am I getting migration and all these other things? 
um, you could ask screenprintgpt.com mm. and it will give you all those answers. And then you could yeah. be like, oh shit, yeah, I am not curing correctly, or I do have a low tension screen, or I yeah. do have this issue or that issue. I th- and then I think, you um, should be able to fix it. I think Matt and I have a have a number seven and a number eight because I think it missed something. So were you going to say something, Matt? Was I going to say? Well, I was going to say, man, this is actually I can see this being a really good tool because I'm in the I'm actually in the process of right now of like building a procedure manual and like how to do things around the shop. But like I'm just doing them off the top of my head right now. So I think this could be a good tool that people in your shop could use or like owners like us could use to write these procedure manuals when they sure. be. Yeah, you yeah. can write your could, SOPs you know, with this. Yeah, yeah, you can write all your SOPs with this. Yeah. This Just is type insane. In the, I had type no in idea. the thing and it'll give you. I wanted to see a number seven though on there yeah. and it didn't <sighs> talk about any sort of like when I'm, if, if we're experiencing some plo- uh, yeah. post bleed in my head, I'm sort of thinking, well, okay, did I use a low bleed white or did I use a poly white? Like yeah. what's my, what white ink did I use? And if, all, if those fail, did I use any sort of barrier or any sort right, of blocker. block, you know, like we're, blocker. yeah. Right. And so I think that if we're having a problematic, like, let's say you're, you're printing on some sort of camo thing and you're experiencing post bleed. I think a lot of that stuff in there made sense because yeah, it's true. You need to check your EOM and your pressures. You don't want to, if you're, if you have too much pressure, or whatever, you're going to be jamming that ink into the shirt instead of on the shirt. Yeah. But at the same time, don't you want to have the right ink like the, or maybe even on a camo, you're going to need some sort of blocker, you know? And yeah. so I don't know. Yeah. I think that it's great and it's only getting better, but I would love to have seen. Yeah, it's constantly I evolving. I didn't see anything about, a, a about the blocker or anything. I just would like to have seen that. That's. I that's think the other thing, it just. So maybe, maybe you would say that under like poly garments or like camo, right? True, Where you true, need the true. Vibration blocker. That's yeah. true. The other parts yeah. of that too that I think a lot of people don't realize, or well, I mean, a lot of people realize in the print industry, but it's just like how how the garments hold heat. You know, for us, True, the biggest yeah. thing when it comes to stuff like that with post bleeding and whatever is because the garments are coming out of the dryer too hot and you're stacking them and then they just retain heat. You ever printed yeah. a whole box worth of shirts and put it in the box and taped it up and came back like eight hours later and opened the box still for a customer warm. and it's still hot or warm yeah, in the box? Not good. Yeah. Yeah, you need not to good. make sure that heat dissipates before you stack them and put them away. We have this uh, yeah. massive fan on top of our dryer that's blowing down onto the shirts yeah. that, you know, you're trying to get shirts coming out of there. It's exiting the dryer at 300 or whatever it is. You yeah. Know, um, and you want to try and knock off a hundred and some degrees real fast before. It, well, first of all, you know, you're touching the shirt. It's hot. You know, for the people at the end of the dryer all day long, that's a hot thing to touch. And so you're mm-hmm. trying to knock it back to something that's tolerable and then also for both bleed regions too yeah for sure yeah yeah all right overrated underrated today we have three of them so just uh i have three things just let me know if you think they're overrated properly rated or underrated the first one is and i might have asked this one before but it's a very important one cauliflower crust pizza Overrated as fuck. Oh, get real pizza. Over, like, man, if you're gonna eat pizza, just eat some real fucking pizza. I agree with you. <laughs> like, you just oh, yeah. get with. If you're gonna do something, do it properly. You know what's funny is me and Christina were having this conversation mm. yesterday, where in Florida there was a bagel place, and it was like a New York bagel place. And I was like, you know what's funny? And I always tell people this when I'm out of town or whatever. And some people know, some people don't. Is like. The reason why they say New York bagels and pizza are the best is because of the New York City water. Mm. And then she was like, yeah, a lot of these places that aren't in New York that have the New York whatever, they buy this thing that turns the water into basically New York City water. Like it does all the like matches all the pH and minerals and everything else. And I was like, there's these businesses that are buying these things to make the water like New York City water. So mm-hmm. that they can have the best possible pizza. And then there's assholes who are making fucking cauliflower crust pizza. <laughs> <laughs> so fuck which, you and your cauliflower which, crust pizza. <laughs> which both is extremely outlandish. Like, yeah. <laughs> so okay, that's my so, answer to your question. Yeah, that's so, a good answer. <laughs> Uh, I am going to say I, I would be with you guys up until I, your heart explodes up until I was at Costco. Do you have Costco in Canada? I don't know. Me too. Okay. You, yeah. So what you, you also need to live do, in igloos too. 
Right. <laughs> what, you, what you need to do is go to Costco and get their Kirkland brand cauliflower crust pizza. It is absolutely and throw it in the garbage and save delicious product. <laughs> are you are you serious? It's actually pretty good. You've tried it. It's good. It's awesome. Yeah, like we're having it tonight oh, because no, it comes not. in. A, it, yeah, it comes in a two pack. It's awesome. <laughs> And what's hey, Jim, what's funny is they uh, they do use New York water in that too, also. But all right, number two. <laughs> hey, Dylan, if you need a new host, man, I'll help you out. Okay, cool, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's yeah. hey, it's, you can hate on me. That's fine. It, it's it's actually <laughs> delicious. I'm sure it's I'm sure it's got its place. Yeah, it's not that I'll, bad. I'll, but like, I'll if I'm going I'm for pizza, I'm, I'm getting pizza. I love the other kind yeah. of pizza too, but you know what? It's not bad. I know. All right, I number know. two. Number number two, we have client. On press approvals. Fuck that. Oh, Get out Fuck of here. That. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's properly rated as much as I don't want to say it. I think yeah. that it is nice to do on large runs so that I feel less stress knowing yeah. that they approved it before we did 10,000 pieces. And I totally agree with you. And I do it on larger runs for that. But I tell them, I'm like, listen, man. I'm going to email you when we're setting up the job and I'll send you and I'll send you the press approval. You got 30 minutes. And if you don't reply within that 30 minutes, we're tearing the job down and you're paying the setup fees again. Yeah. That's what what I I don't like is when the person comes in for their wants to start a clothing line and they're ordering the minimum amount of shirts and then they want photo approval or they want to be here and stand out there and watch us print the shirts. It's like, sorry, that's not a thing. Nah, dude. It's not not a thing. (laughs) Sorry, it's not a thing. (laughs) There's actually this place you can go to. There's this place you can go to in St. Louis that would love to do that for you. (laughs) Come on on by. Um, So I'm with you. I think that um, under like normal circumstances, it's just a nah, dude. But on larger orders, it's like um, a mandatory actually here. It's not just uh, hey, they're requesting it like we request, yeah. you know, like we want to do it. It's for me at we, that point. Like I would rather do yeah. it to not be a stress ball knowing right. that. Yeah. And you're right because like what if you print like, yeah, 2,000 shirts and there's this one little thing that was off that you didn't see. Right. And then who who pays that bill? It's yeah. just insurance. <laughs> it costs you whatever it costs yeah. you, but it's insurance that you're going to be okay. Yeah. I like it. Number yeah. three. Ooh. Apple Music. No, I never use it. I use it. What do you use, Spotify? Spotify all day, baby. Uh, I'm the opposite. I'm Apple Music. Apple Music, I, I properly admit it's good. That's so I can't say anything about it. I just never use it. Okay. And so what did you say? Properly rated? Is that what you said? Yeah. Yeah. I'm down with it. Are you Apple Music? Me? Yeah. Andy? I'm Apple. So yeah. Mm-hmm. Nah. Uh, I would say for it is wild that for $10 a month, yeah, you I can agree. listen to anything ever in the world. Well, you know, it used to be. Spotify. Well, okay, I'm not. I didn't say Apple versus Spotify. Can I? Can I ask something though? Because I, <laughs> I just, I just genuinely don't know. My this probably is on all things now because I'm. I think it was. What was the first one? What was the one that everyone was like? Oh, iTunes. Really cool. You mean? No. Oh, well, there was iTunes, but what was there? There was like that service that was like Spotify before Spotify. Do you remember like Lime Wire, Wire. Adapter? No, no, Pandora, not Pandora. It, or, yeah, was it Pandora? Yeah, like a radio yeah, station. Yeah, it was Pandora. Yeah, it was like radio yeah. station, whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. See, that's my favorite part about like I like Spotify because I can just search an album or whatever and listen to whatever. Mm-hmm. My favorite part though is to find new artists. Oh, yeah. And then yeah. do that artist radio and then find 30 more artists that are just like that artist. And then my favorite thing is to make playlists off of all of those. And so my phone is just full of like different genre playlists of Apple music. Do that too. Okay. See, I didn't know that. Like I've just always used Spotify and I have a family playing with Spotify. So like I have like my kids and you know, my mom's on my family plan. So like I pay the bill and they all get to listen to like unlimited music. So. I would imagine they're both probably pretty identical. Or they're probably both pretty similar. Because anyway. yeah. I don't use that. I'm the opposite. I've never used Spotify. No idea. So I always use Apple Music. But I would imagine those two would probably be pretty close to each other. Yeah. They, yeah. yeah. So I guess just rate, how would you rate Spotify? So if it's basically the I same it. thing. It's so all day, every day in my ear. Underrated, so. basically. Yeah. I, I don't I I feel like if you don't do it, it's on un, it's underrated and you should definitely jump on board. But I think it's does exactly what it's supposed to do. And it's fucking my entire day, all day. Like, yeah, but like when I was a kid, 
you know, if you, if you weren't a radio listener and you wanted to listen to music, you had to go buy it. You, know, you had to go to the store. You had to go to the record store, which was great. When I, but... when I was a teenager, I walked everywhere, like to friends' houses, whatever, from my dad's house, like out in the middle of nowhere. And I always had to carry my backpack because I had a 500 or a thousand disc <laughs> CD booklet that I yeah. carried. The thing probably weighed fucking 30 pounds. <laughs> I had to carry it with me everywhere because I had my Discman mm, yeah. and my headphones. And I would just like, I can't go without it. Like I, I don't, I'm not bringing ACD. I'm bringing yeah. fucking thousand with me everywhere I go. Yeah. I don't think yeah. people realize now that didn't grow up, you know, when we did that, you know, for $10, you get unlimited music and it's, it's just pretty incredible. It's there. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's there. Did you, so you were mentioning your CD um, album or case or whatever. Did you ever have, um, I remember when they came out with the visor ones and you would put them along oh, your for, visor. Yeah, definitely. And then you hit the brakes hard and all the CDs fly out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. Um, and then they came out with like the CD changer in your trunk. I had that you under, put, like, I had it under the front seat of my car. Oh man. I forgot about those things. Yeah. And you could have like a 20 disc changer. Right? Yeah. They were awesome. Then, you were the, like, best part, yeah. the best part is when you yeah. change the CD and you would hear under your seat, like, and it was like changing discs. Those were the days. I love that shit. Yeah. Yeah. The best right. part is when it is when they didn't have anti skip on CD players yet, and you put a mm. CD player in your car, and every time you hit a bump, the CD would skip. Oh right, yeah. right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then they made like anti skip ones. Well, it was just so much We're better. We're old. <laughs> <laughs> hey, my first car, I had cassette tape. You know, like I would uh, put a cassette yeah, in there, and so when you had yeah. to, like, well, if you wanted to rewind or whatever, fast forward, you know, you would it would take forever with CD. You just put your number, or you just skip yeah. whatever to the next song. It's just it was incredible. Do you guys, do you guys remember like when they had that like cassette for the car with the aux cord that could go to your yeah. Walkman? Mm -hmm. you remember those too? Yeah. 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 For sure. Oh yeah, yeah. We were talking about that not long ago at the shop where you would listen to the radio station, like the rock station or whatever as a kid. And the, the way to make your own mixtape would to take a regular uh, cassette tape, like wet, like a paper towel yeah, or paper toilet towel. paper and shove it in the holes on top. Yeah. So when you put it in your uh, cassette player, you could hit record and it would record off the radio onto your cassette disc or your cassette, yeah. whatever. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So we would have like you would have like a Fleetwood mm -hmm. Mac fucking uh, VHS or not VHS uh, cassette. And then you would just like mm -hmm. it would be like Metallica and Pantera like over top of it. Yeah. I remember doing that too. Those were the days. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but you would the best part about that, though, is you would always miss the first like 10 seconds of every song because you would hear it and then have to run over and hit record. Yeah, and you'd have to start it and stop it at the right time on the date, right? Yeah. Or or the fucking DJ yeah. would talk over it, you know? Yeah. Like, yeah. I don't know. What they was they would say shit like the weather or whatever. Or the, yeah. I don't know. They would talk over the first few seconds. All right, yeah, guys. You're right. Yeah. Last question. What's for dinner? Oh man. You go first, Dylan. Pizza probably now. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. no i don't know tonight's a thursday night where i usually go hang out with friends and do something so i have no idea it'll be wherever we end up i think we're all talking about playing basketball after work so nice. i also have a sinus infection so i don't know how much i should be doing but i kind of have been hankering for mexican food so i, I don't know i might try to do some kind of mexican food maybe chipotle or something <clears throat> Matt, what are you? I mean, you're in nice Canada. Time. What are you guys eating? Like fucking whale blubber or something? <laughs> whale blubber with uh, topped with syrup. Remember that? Oh, and the Canadian bacon, yeah. where it's just yeah. a slice of ham. Yeah, I just <laughs> I just skin the pig right out there, and then I just put it on the on the barbecue or on the Perfect. fryer. Then you're good right. to go. Yeah. Right. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good. I'm actually <laughs> I'm actually gonna have. I'm trying to stick. I'm on a diet. I put myself on a diet. I'm trying to lose weight. So I'm trying to stick to that now. So probably my diet consists of my dinner time will be like either uh, ground beef and rice or chicken and rice. One of the two. I don't know. Two like no pressure. Like and rice people. Yeah, I know. Dude, fucking what is happening to the world? Dude, I know. Believe me, man. I, <laughs> I'm just trying to get my, my shit back together again and just see where i can go lose a little bit of weight and then feel a little bit lighter and then i don't cheers know. to that right. I'm, I, I'm with you i get proud it. of you yeah thanks man see, Andy, Andy, you're I, having cauliflower pizza 
Tonight is every Thursday. My mom comes over for dinner. And so tonight's cauliflower pizza with, uh, I'm going to make a salad on the side. Oh, too. Nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What kind of salad? She likes green leaf lettuce. And so I'll, I'll do that. And then I always hard boil some eggs. Aren't they you know? all green leaf? No, no. That's green leaf is the actual name of it. If they have red leaf. They have romaine, you know, butter. I mean, they're, all, they're all green leaves. Okay, fine. <laughs> fine just question matt it was great great talking to you man thanks for sharing your story appreciate it yeah you guys yeah. too yeah thanks, likewise dude. we'll talk to you later yeah are we done now is this over, it's over. <laughs> yep. get back to work yeah this is it eh this is, this it. is it eh uh, okay i i can i reach out to you guys to ask you guys some uh like questions later on about the yeah yeah yeah. For, yeah do you have a oh, quick totally. one do you have something you want to ask right now yeah well i did actually yeah so all right hit us I, with something i don't want to yeah, cut yeah. you off yeah, go ahead. Uh, okay, sweet. Actually, because I wanted to ask you guys about uh, like procurement contracts with certain clients. Do you guys do that? Or like, you know what I mean? Like, do you guys have any like procurement contracts with clients, like one or two year contracts that you do where uh, you guys only do the printing for them for so long that they're not allowed to shop around mm -hmm. anywhere else? I've never done one. I've always, yeah. I mean, ever, I think everyone always wants to have that, but it, it, right. why do you have someone that's trying to do one or? Well, no, I'm, I'm trying to, I, cause now we're growing and we're getting bigger and bigger clients and we're doing work for um, like our Saskatoon sports teams and also to a few other growing companies. So like we're doing thousands of garments for these companies and I just wanted to maybe try to think about getting them under a procurement contract where it was like, okay, where the contract protects us and them. So say I give them, exclusive pricing for x amount of garments over yeah, so yeah. You, you know what i mean the but only way, way i would say that they generally work is if you are giving them some some kind of exclusive pricing because it sucks right. to bite the bullet for somebody and right. do all this hard work and then they go somewhere else and yes like, and that's exactly what i mean right that yeah, was a yeah. that was like a professional question i wanted to ask if you guys do that with any of your guys's clients or i feel like if you could pull it off then do it like if they'll agree yeah. to it, but yeah. I've never done one just because I, I don't know. I feel like it's going to be a lot of back and forth. They're going to be like, well, I want, if I'm getting special pricing, I want really special pricing. And it's like, right. All right. Well, I don't really want to do yeah. that, but you know. Yeah. Right. And, and I just thought maybe too, cause it, cause it would guarantee us the work and then it would guarantee them like saying, we'll a lock in price. this. Yeah. Good price over X amount of time. Right. So, and then that, yeah, then you're not screwed or whatever. Yeah. I would say for us, you know, we've never done a contract. I think that like you're describing only time I've ever done anything was somebody, um, it required us to purchase a piece of equipment. Right. And so we were going to have to, we were going to have that expense and I was, and it was just, you know, for <clears throat> them, just for them. And so I think uh, we made some sort of contract or some sort of, I didn't even know if we signed something, maybe we made them prepay. I can't remember what it was. It's been a while. Yeah. But I think it, would, it makes sense then. So like if, let's say you had a large customer, like a large client come to you and they say, Hey dude, you know, we're going to, we're going to give you, you know, we, we, we want to order 3000 shirts a day and I'm yeah. going to have to buy a press or something, you know, and hire three people yeah. for that. And then I think that a contract is fair. Otherwise I don't really like contracts personally. I hate the fact right. that like Cintas comes here, you know, for our, for our stuff and I got That's locked in a contract. Yeah, for our bathroom, yeah. uh, paper towels and so whatever. All the I hate that. Stuff. I hate that contract because it auto renewed on me one time or something. I'm like, oh no, you know, because I don't want to be locked in to this to this long contract. And so yeah, I just yeah. I don't want to do that to other people unless <clears throat> we are, um, you know, buying some equipment specifically for them. I think then that's right. It. Yeah, yeah, because I, I I have a client right now. We've been working together for like the last three years. And he's been like exponentially, he's been growing quite a bit now. And I've always given him like really good pricing because again, we've been working together for so long and he has so many stores now and it's just, it's a franchise that keeps growing and growing and growing. So then I'm just like, okay, well maybe is now that he's getting bigger and I'm getting bigger. I was wondering if that was even a thing. Or if I it's a so. thing, it's, yeah. I think yeah. anything's a thing. Yeah. I think you could do, that's a, I don't want to say that's the thing with the thing and the thing. Um, <laughs> I just, you can do whatever the fuck you want to do. 
Like as right. long as yeah. as long as it's an agreement between you and the customer, yeah, like well, who gives yeah. a shit? Like if if you can land some contract with some massive company and they're going to send you all this stuff and yeah. you know you 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 have limits. You're like, okay, the lowest I'll possibly go on this is this, and the highest my normal pricing is this. If I can get them with this in within this window and agree to yeah. like only use me for this year or five years or whatever it is, and fuck yeah, dude, like do it, do it, yeah. But yeah. if if it's it doesn't work out like i don't i don't want to see you lock in a price either for a year and then six months down the line there's some like world crisis and cotton prices go through the roof yeah and you agreed to pay you know do shirts for six bucks and then the fucking blank cost is six bucks then Then yeah but you could you could have in the contract you could say it's a commodity and so you could just say whatever the blank price is plus printing and so you know you don't have to lock in the blank price i don't think I just think right. that if you have a if you have a customer that you know is giving you all this work and they want to scale and you just go to them and you're like, look, I'm I want to scale with you. In order for me to do that, I have to hire two more people and I'm going to upgrade my press or add another press, whatever that is. Yeah. And so I don't want to do that though, unless I know that you're on board and you're on board for two years. Let's make yeah. this contract here. I'm going to lock in pricing for you so that you know you're going to get you know there's an advantage for you. And then also yeah. I'm not left hanging if in case you go somewhere else and I have all this. I've hired these people or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's totally fair. I think it happens all the time. And I think that yeah. in that situation, yes. But normally yeah. in the day-to-day stuff, we don't really have that. Right. Yeah. Because, you know, what's funny is because I know, um, so my auto, I actually bought it from John from Screenplay. And I know, uh, Dylan, you were down there with the Blue Crew and you went and seen John's shop, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, because they're gigantic. So John's a good dude. Him and I, again, have built like a little relationship too where I can ask him questions and stuff. And so I was kind of just wondering, is like, how do you, how do you procure a uh, facility of that size with that many presses and that many staff? Like, you know what I mean? You, would a shop like that have, has got to have some sort of security in place? No, I don't know. I don't, I'm not sure. I feel like yes and no, but I think the thing is, is that there's all these large shops and people think they, they have everything figured out. And I feel like but now. the more and more, you know, these real people, they're fucking like, hair is falling out just as much as yours where they're like, (laughs) you know, Hey, like I know I have, I look like I have this massive client and all this other stuff, but the reality is they owe me fucking $200,000 and this is happening and this is going on. And they, they are coming at me because they can go to someone else for two cents a shirt cheaper. And like, it's just, it's just bigger things and bigger problems and whatever. More money, more problems, more money, more problems. It's we're all in the same boat. It's just a bigger bigger boat just a bigger scale yeah 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 yeah. Yeah. okay cool yeah i know that's kind of all i really wanted to ask so far yeah all right dude yeah Yeah, if you do have anything else you want to reach out to me you can always reach out to me i mean andy's open too but um, that's cool really appreciate you doing this dude thanks for taking time out of your day and uh yeah i'm stoked you're printing and on an oil rig yeah me too thanks man it was nice (laughs) chatting (laughs) me too man yeah Mm -hmm. Don't get it on any more ladders and definitely yeah, fuck, ladders, dude. fuck ladders and definitely try some cauliflower pizza. <laughs> <laughs>